The new Republican leaders of the House kicked off February with the first big debate on immigration policy of this Congress. The debate kicked off in the House Judiciary Committee, where newly appointed chairman Jim Jordan set the tone for how Republicans want to deal with immigration and the border. They want to conflate the issues. They want to talk at the same time about asylum, about legal immigration, about illegal immigration, about the fentanyl crisis, and about border security at large. Democrats do not want to put these issues together. They say Congress has tried and failed before many times to solve all these border-related issues together in one package. And they're right, Congress has failed to do so. But they also say that Republicans think these issues are too good a political issue to let go ahead of the 2024 presidential election. Jordan talked about illegal alien trespassers, used language that Democrats find frankly racist, and they called him out on it. And Democrats basically said that Republicans are trying to conflate a series of problems, whether it's the security crisis at the border, and then the security crisis in Mexico, and whether it's immigration, whether it's asylum. They say Republicans are trying to conflate all of these issues in order to not find a solution and keep it at the forefront of politics. Congressman Lu Correa, one of the members who most cares about the issue. He has more dreamers in his district than anyone else. He has political reasons to care about it. He has personal reasons to care about it. He basically told me that what he sees is a presidential election that's already started, and it's a presidential election that's gonna weigh heavily on the immigration issue, on the border security issue, and to keep it together, and that it is not going to get solved because it is good politics for Republicans. That's his view. On the other hand, you have Republicans like Representative Johnson of Louisiana. He basically blamed the Biden administration for the entire crisis the same way as other Republican members did. He said the Biden administration is systematically, intentionally dismantling immigration enforcement. And he accused the Biden administration of encouraging and inviting illegal immigration. So you have Republicans on one side that say the Biden administration is on purpose creating this crisis, who are using the language that advocates warn against of an invasion of close to the great replacement theory. And on the other hand, you have Democrats who say that unless you separate the issues, Congress cannot find a resolution. So it seems that we're stuck, but there are moderates on both sides of the aisle who agree that the issues have to be split apart, that they have to be dealt with one by one, that the fentanyl crisis demands a certain kind of solution, that the broken immigration system demands a certain kind of solution, and that even asylum itself has to be treated as its own problem and own set of solutions. You have moderates on the Democratic side, like Abigail Spamberger, who told The Hill recently that she believes that conflating the issues is counterproductive. Being truthful with the American people about the fact that it's not as easy as this or that to kind of fix this crisis or that crisis, that demonstrates respect for voters, respect for our fellow Americans, and frankly, respect for the gravity of the issue that we're facing when it comes to immigration and border security, which are two separate issues that really do go hand in hand. But also on the other side, someone like Tony Gonzalez, a Republican whose district covers the largest portion of the border of any district that's more than 800 miles of the U.S.-Mexico border. He believes that if anybody conflates the border security and the immigration issue, they just don't understand the problem. The issues that are related and correlated between the border, border security, immigration, asylum, there are plenty. There are issues in the legal immigration system that does not provide enough temporary workers that American companies need from abroad that you cannot find in the United States. Those visas are hard to get. Most companies agree, most industries agree that they are not enough, whether it's agricultural, non-agricultural temporary, whether it's permanent immigration permits, whether it's high tech, all of these industries are complaining that they cannot find enough workers from abroad, they cannot bring them over. Then there's the asylum issue. Asylum has become the primary means for most workers and most migrants to come to the United States, but it is not necessarily the ideal means for most migrants. Mexicans generally have a very hard time making an asylum claim. People from other parts of the continent may have an easier time, such as Venezuelans or Nicaraguans who do live under oppressive 
regimes. That includes Cubans as well, Haitians whose regime is also a hybrid democracy, but conditions in the country are such that it is easier for them to make an asylum claim in the United States. Now, what's the problem with that? They have to get to U.S. soil to make an asylum claim. The refugee system that could start their immigration process in their home countries, that is incredibly small and has historically not brought enough people to mitigate the pressure and the demand for migration to the United States. Adding to a long list of border security issues is the issue of fentanyl in the United States. Fentanyl addiction is an ongoing crisis. It is killing tens of thousands of Americans and most fentanyl does come from Mexico. Most fentanyl comes from Mexico through legal points of entry on the US-Mexico border and majority of it, according to Customs and Border Protection, is smuggled in by US citizens. However, it has been good politics to conflate the movement of people into the United States, the movement of foreigners into the United States, with the movement of fentanyl in the United States because there is a very real and healthy fear of this drug hitting the streets and this drug killing American children. Democrats say those two have to be separated, and as do many moderate Republicans. But the Republicans who control the House Judiciary Committee, the committee that's in charge of, of dealing with most border and immigration issues, they don't believe the two issues should be separated. And in fact, they had as a witness at this hearing, a parent of a child who tragically died using a fentanyl pill. There are a whole series of proposed solutions to any of these problems. Some moderates like Spanberger are proud of the work they have done on legislation to fix some of these issues. So I was proud that President Biden signed my legislation securing America's borders against fentanyl act. Um, which is a step in the right direction, but still more needs to be done. There are many solutions. What has evaded Congress historically is taking in, whether it was called comprehensive immigration reform or something else in the Trump years, putting all these issues into the same basket has traditionally ended up with Congress walking out with their hands empty. This issue is such good politics that it's not being left just to the Judiciary Committee that traditionally handles immigration. The Oversight Committee led by Representative Comer is also looking into the immigration and border issue. They traditionally haven't looked into immigration as much, but they are taking a different approach. Representative Comer himself said that he would not have witnesses focusing on things like the fentanyl crisis, the domestic issue that is affecting so many people in the United States. That's an issue that Comer called red meat, which of course Representative Jordan, as chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, was very eager to engage in. So you will have different approaches during this Congress, but it does seem that conflating these issues will be a consistent push and a consistent methodology for House Republicans for the next two years.